Hello and welcome to EGM 702, Week 5, Part 3, Machine Learning. So what is machine learning? You've probably at least heard the term, if you're not already familiar with it. But if we were to go online and start looking in the places that you normally would look for these things, like Reddit or other websites, you might see things like this, where we have the crack in the wall, labeled statistics, covered up by a pretty frame, and we call that machine learning. So in some interpretations, machine learning is really just basic statistics or classical statistical methods with a pretty frame decorating the outside. If you look in other places, you might see, for example, in this comic, where our machine learning system is where we're just pouring the data into a big pile of linear algebra and hope that the answers come out the other side. And if they're looking wrong, then we just keep stirring the pile until we start seeing better answers. So as with all things, there is a little bit of truth. There is some truth in the humor here, but it is not the entire story of machine learning. So for a more formal definition, machine learning is just the computer modeling of learning processes. So we're using computers to, or rather we're using computer models to try to model the way that human brains, or more precisely animal brains, learn things. We're also, in a sense, we are using statistics to help find or interpret patterns in data but again, it's a little bit more complicated than the jokes on the previous slide might have you believe. What we're also doing, in a sense, is we're training these models to do certain tasks without explicitly programming them using an algorithm. So if we're trying to get a computer to do something without machine learning, we have to have very specific instructions. The computer does those does the task according to the very specific instructions that we give it, and we get a result that is hopefully fairly correct. If we have an application where we don't necessarily know the very specific instructions, on the other hand, we might want to use machine learning, where we can just feed the, feed the algorithm some data, train it up, and hopefully then use it to apply to new data that the computer hasn't seen before, in order to help us interpret that data. You might also hear, hear a term called deep learning, and this is a specific set of machine learning algorithms or a branch of machine learning where the algorithms are inspired by the human brain. And I've been using this term over and over, and it's probably time to make sure that we define it. So an algorithm is a process or a set of rules to follow in calculations or problem solving. So all, all an algorithm is, is just a set of rules that we're getting the computer to follow. There are a few different approaches to machine learning. The first is very similar to what we've already talked about in image classification, unsupervised learning. This is where we have an algorithm that is trained with unlabeled data and we're hoping that the computer, or the algorithm rather, is able to find some structure or patterns in the data. So for example, we might say, okay, we have this fruit basket here, we have a number of different fruits, and we want the computer to separate the different fruits and classify them. And so that's hopefully the result of unsupervised learning. We're not telling the computer what the different fruits are, we're just hoping that it can identify them based on their characteristics and sort them or label them or classify them accordingly. Supervised learning, on the other hand, is where we train the algorithm or train the computer using already labeled data. So we have our example input data and the expected output value. So here we're giving the computer pictures of apples. We're telling the computer these are what apples look like. We then have new data that the computer is then hopefully to identify correctly is an apple. So again, we're training the algorithm to infer some function to map or classify the new unseen data. Reinforced learning is a little bit more complicated and we won't talk about it very much in these lessons, but this is where the algorithms are actually learning 
by trial and error in order to achieve some objective. So for example, if we're having a, uh, trying to get a computer to play a video game, we have the state of the video game at a particular time, the computer takes an action, and based on the result of that action, it knows that it did a good thing or a bad thing, and then it continues to, to progress accordingly. So we're, in a sense, with this, we are rewarding or punishing, and this is sort of a imperfect analogy here, uh, the computer or the algorithm based on what the algorithm does in a particular situation to help it to learn what to do in certain situations. This is, for example, um, not necessarily what we're doing for video games, but for things like self-driving cars. Um, this is this is the kind of uh, machine learning that's going on. So in supervised learning, we're starting with a example labeled data set. So we have our training samples that we're using to train up our algorithm. So we use a portion of this labeled example data set to actually train the model. This is where we feed the data and the results into the computer or into the algorithm, and we say, okay, you know, these are what apples look like, these are what oranges look like, so the computer knows, okay, these are the characteristics of apples that I need to identify, these are the characteristics of oranges that I need to identify. We then either use the rest of the example data set, so the data that we've held out, or we use an external data set that the computer hasn't seen before in order to test or validate the model. And this is how we can identify whether our model is actually performing well or not. So the test data should have similar statistical properties to the training data. And one very common approach here is to take the entire example data set and we take a random sample of usually about 70 or so percent and you use that for our training data, and then the rest of that, the, the f remaining 30% is what's used for the test data. But remember, we want these to have similar statistical properties to the training data, so the test data shouldn't be, for example, pineapples. This isn't actually going to tell us whether our algorithm is doing a good job identifying apples and oranges. We want our, tra our test data to look similar to what we've trained the model with. Later, after we have developed our model and, and we're using it in further applications, we can hopefully feed it things like pineapples and it would at least be able to tell us that this isn't an orange or this isn't an apple. So one other concept that we need to talk about is what is known as over or underfitting a model. So overfitting, or in machine learning often referred to as overtraining, our model too closely matches the data set that we're using. So another way of thinking of this is that our model has more parameters than are actually justified by the data set that we're using. And as a result, the model is usually going to be unable to handle new data that it hasn't seen before. It's going to do a very bad job of predicting the outputs for those, uh, for those new data. Um, so this example shown here, uh, we have a number of sample points that you can see here. We're attempting to model a particular function uh, that's shown in green here. And if we use, for example, a polynomial of degree 15, we get a really, really great fit to our data set, to our training data. You know, the, the, line, the line of our model passes through each of these different points or a number of these different points. But it's going to do a very poor job when we put in new data and look at the results for that. It's not going to come very close to, um, to actually uh, modeling the particular function that we're attempting to work with. Underfitting is sort of the opposite problem, or again in machine learning this is often known as undertraining. And this is where our model doesn't match the structure of the data. So for example, this is if we're using a linear model to try to model a nonlinear function or a nonlinear data set. Um, this is one example where underfitting is going to come into play. And as a result, once again, the model is not going to very adequately predict or to or, um, classify the new data that we're, that we're feeding it. 
So if we look at the example here, uh, the model using a polynomial of degree four has a very nice fit to the data. There are some mistakes, but this is to be expected because we often are dealing with noisy data that have, um, that have an associated error or uncertainty. But it comes fairly close as well to actually fitting the true function. And that's really what we're interested in. So we want to make sure that when we're fitting our data, uh, their models are generalizable. And that means that they work well with new unseen data. They're not, um, they're not adhering too closely to our training data, but they're also adequately capturing the variability that we see in the training data. To sum all of this up, machine learning is computer modeling of learning processes. It comes in three main approaches. This is either unsupervised machine learning, supervised machine learning, and reinforced learning. And we're using our input data. In, in supervised machine learning, we're using our input data to train a model that we then split into training and test data sets so that we can actually validate the output um, of the model and see that we're doing a good job. We want our models to be predictive without overfitting the training data sets. So we want them, we want them to do a good job fitting the training data, but we don't want them to do too good of a job fitting the training data. I have a number of different uh, additional resources that I've uh, linked to here. One is uh, a web page from IBM that goes into the topic of machine learning in a bit more depth. Um, there's also a, a free book available online called Interpretable Machine Learning, where I took the example from one of the slides. Um, you can see the link here, and I'll include a link on Blackboard as well. And there's a couple of different videos that I've included here that talk a little bit more about different machine learning methods, as well as deep learning, which again, I'm not going to go too far into in this course. And then finally, if you're interested in doing a bit more about machine learning, Google has a free machine learning crash course. It's pretty excellent. Um, you will need a little bit of programming background in order to be able to do some of the exercises, but you can at least make your way through quite a bit of it without, uh, without too much difficulty. So that's all I have for this week, for this lesson rather. Uh, I hope it was interesting and useful for you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them on the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.